Hi, I'm Carol. I'm so glad you found me. Welcome to my creating corner. Today I'm going to be working on a fun fold. And yes, as I often do, I blended a couple of stamp sets together. Let's take a look. Here we go. Isn't that adorable? So here I'm using the cattails from the new dies Friendly Silhouettes. And I've got the gentleman from A Good Man and his lantern from our new stamp set, Campology. Let's open the fold and here's some more stamps from Campology and notice the mountains from Mountain Air to decorate the inside panel. Just love it. On this card, I did the same front because I really like that front and on this inner flap, I decided it'd be cute to have a little family going on a little walk in the park. Now this woman is from the stamp set Wonderful Moments and she fits perfectly with the gentleman from A Good Man. Are you ready to make this card? Great! So am I. Let's gather our materials and get started. Alright, so what are we going to use here? We start out with a piece of cardstock that measures 11 by 4 and a quarter. We're also going to need a piece of early espresso, four and a quarter by at least three, that's what we're going to make our little cattails from, and then a piece of DSP that's at least seven by four and a quarter. We're going to cut these down to decorate the insides of the flaps, so it can be two pieces of scrap, three and a half by four if you want, but seven by four and a quarter, and you'll have it fine. Okay, so that's all the papers that we need. Just these three pieces of, um, the one piece of designer paper and the two little pieces of cardstock. That's all we need. Now, for inks. Oh, here we go. We are going to use several inks. We have gray granite and basic gray, as well as our archival basic black. Those out of the way. And then we will also be using crumb cake, crushed curry, Night of Navy and Mossy Meadow. We're going to do some stamping with those. And yes, yes, we'll be using plenty of blends. We do need a pencil, you'll see why in a moment, and a blender pen for luck. But we do want the old olive blends, gray granite, Cajun craze, our um, ivory. And this is one of our new in colors. This is called Cinnamon Cider. So there we go. So, are we ready? Shall we get started? Yes, okay. The first thing we're going to do is we want to score our cardstock. So we take our cardstock and we're going to score it at three and five eighths. Now, the five eighths is, let me show you, make sure that you. If you have this trimmer, we have three, three and a quarter, three and a half, three and three quarters. In between like your quarters and your half mark and your half and your three quarters, you see three little lines. The middle one is the eighth and the shortest of all are the sixteenths. So we want to score at three and five eighths, so it's that center line in between the three and a half and the three and three quarters. So we'll hit it at three and five eighths on both ends and of course our light thing, our light piece is our score. So three and five eighths. Here we go. And now the other side. Three and five eighths. Remember it's that mark that's in between the three and a half and the three and three quarters. There we go. Now we've got our scoring done and this is the most difficult part and it really isn't difficult at all. It shows you how easy this card is. Here's what we need our pencil for. Okay, we have to mark two inches up from the bottom on both sides. So both ends. So here's what we're going to do. We've got it down, so here we see the two inch mark, and I'm going to make a little pencil mark. And then up here, here's the two inch mark, I'll make the little pencil mark. 
Okay, what we want to do is cut an angle from the score line to the pencil mark. So to make it easier to see your score line, we'll put a little dot at the score lines. There we go. Okay, now we're going to put our dot right on the cutting line itself. And then this dot we have to swing around and get it on the cutting line. There we go. Dot and dot. Okay, I, when I'm cutting into a little corner like that, I like to start my blade in the middle of the cardstock just so it doesn't squish it down. There we go. Got that cut out perfectly. Now let's try it on this side. Okay, there's the dot for my score line. Here's my dot for the bottom. Okay, they're both in the cutting track. Let's get it in the middle there. Choo -choo. And there we go. Okay. Now, we can go ahead and take the trimmer out of the way. We are done with that. And everything else looks good. Okay. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, now that we can start our stamping, let's go ahead and get the mountains on this middle panel. Now, for that, we're going to make sure that we're going to mask off the rest, of the rest of the card. Okay. Yes, we did cut off that corner, and yes, we are going to decorate the inside of the panel. But still, we don't need ink in extra places if we don't need it. Why put it there? Okay, so in basic gray, I've got the mountain from Mountain Air. Did I show you the, the sets we're using? I don't think I did. Oh my gosh. Let me show you the sets real quick. We're using A Good Man. Get that out of the way. We're going to be using The Gentleman in the Chair. We're using Mountain Air for the mountains. This is a brand new stamp set. It's called Campology, and we're using several pieces out of this set. We use the tree, the tent, the lantern, and the coffee pot. And we're also using this brand new die. It's called Friendly Silhouettes. It's got the cattails in there. And I tell you, sometimes you see a die and your mind just goes to the stamp set you want to use it with. So the cattail is just perfect with the guy relaxing in the chair. And look at this one. I love this one. It's um, a border of just flowers, a garden. And isn't that going to be perfect with beautiful moments? Oh, can't put the, I can't wait to put these two together. So that'll come as soon as I'm done with this card, for sure. So let me go ahead and put this out of the way. Golly, I can't believe I neglected to show you that. And I'm glad I did that because this is a photopolymer stamp, and when we stamp with a photopolymer stamp, it we really like to have it on a softer surface, and this is just a piercing pad. So I'm going to go ahead, I've got cardstock on the piercing pad. I've masked off the ends. Now, in basic gray, I'm going to ink up the mountains. Let me stamp here to make sure that they're completely inked up, and they are, so let me re-ink. Okay, get that out of the way. We're all covered up, covered up, and we go there. And I'm going to stamp one more time, just slightly off, to give it a little bit of dimension like a mountain range. Okay, now I get my simple chamois to clean this off, and I'm doing that right away because this is one of those reversible stamps. I'm going to turn this stamp over, 
and the way that this stamp is made, I can actually fill in those mountains. I'm going to stamp over it in this gray granite, and it's going to look so good. So nice. So there we go, and I'm just going to line it up, and there, and there. There we go. Oh, you know what? I think I missed a piece there. There we go. Very good, very good. Gives it a nice idea. Let me grab my blender pen, kind of pull it up. There we go. Muddle it a little bit. Alrighty. Good enough. Okay. Now, let's look at our flaps. Go ahead and get that out of the way. Let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and put the um, fellow from the good man on the front. Here we go. And we're going to put him using the archival black. Now this is a hard pad. It's not one of those soft ones. So you can kind of move it around a little bit. You know, shimmy and rub. Yes, it's completely inked up. So there, we moved it around a little more. Let me find where I want him. I think I'm going to put him right about there. We don't need to put him too low but we don't need to put them too high either. Perfect. And let's put that aside. Now we'll go ahead and put the lantern down. Stamp. Yes, it's completely inked up. Go ahead and put the lantern down there. And while I have the black out, I'm going to go ahead and put the tent on the inner flap. Okay. Yes, it's inked up. Now, yeah, we're going to put the tent on the left because of the orientation of the trees. Good spot for him. Okay. And before any of these things sit in the ink too long, I'm going to go ahead and wipe that one clean. Now to get the black off, I'm going to use this stays on cleaner. It really does a great job at getting off your permanent inks. It's um, easy to use, quick to use, and I'm just going to blot it off. And look at that, that permanent black, it's gone. Now, if your stamps do get stained, it's okay because they still work. It's just, it's nice when they're not all stained up. It's nice when, they're, when they stay looking clean. Okay, there we go. Got these all clean. That's good. Get them out of the way. All right. Now, we want to put this tent in the middle of some trees, don't we? Okay, now I've already made some masks. Okay. When you're doing stamping and sponging and all, you're going to want to make some masks. I made masks of the guy in the chair and the lantern, and also of the tent. So, let's put that there. In Mossy Meadow, I'm going to mask off the rest of that. Okay. And in Mossy Meadow, I'm going to tap, tap, tap. I just re-inked this stamper, so it's going to be pretty 
juicy. There we go. And we're going to stamp and we're going to stamp and we're going to stamp. Yep. And maybe a little more right there. Okay. It is pretty wet because, like I say, I just re-inked that up. But we're going to go ahead and take the blender pen and we're just going to really kind of muddle it. Just like we did with the mountains. Just kind of blend some of these branches a little. There we go. Don't have to do a lot. Okay. Let's wipe that off. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, while we're here, let's go ahead and color the tent. Let me go ahead and take this old olive. I think that might be a good color for it. And we're just going to use the blends. Get an olive colored tent here. Darker. I like to hit like the artist's little shadow lines. They're really a good guide for your darker blend. And then after I get the darks in there, I go back with the light again and kind of pull it all together. Use the other side. I love blends. It just lays the color down and you don't have any stroke marks. Very nice. Okay, now while I have the old olive out, let's go ahead and come to the front and give him an old olive colored chair. Go ahead and color his chair in carefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. While I'm at the fella, let's go ahead and finish coloring him in. I'll take the ivory for his skin. There we go. Lay some color down there. And how about a Cajun Craze shirt? And again, these are the blends. I like to go over the entire thing first with the light. Yes, yes, yes. And you don't have to be make sure every piece is covered because we're going to use something else, right? There we go. Now we come back to the artist's little wrinkle marks with the dark. There we are. And go back over the whole thing with the light. And it blends it all together so you have nice. Okay. <clears throat> His pants. There we go. Let's give him some cinnamon cider pants and a cinnamon cider hat. I like this color. This cinnamon cider is a nice color. It really is. Dark there. Okay. 
Okay, and hit it again with the light. Just kind of blend it all in. Perfect. Okay. Um. Okay. Now let me clean off these trees before I really make a mess. I am not putting him near the trees. I'm not going to worry about that. All right. All right. All right. Um, time to start sponging. Okay. Let's take the crushed curry. We're going to start with the crushed curry and put a little bit of light on the topic. Okay. We're going to tap, tap, tap with the little blending thing. We're going to start in the middle, make it brighter, and then we're going to pull that glow out. Okay. Let's pull that glow out. Go in circles. There we go. Okay, now that's all we're going to do with that for the moment. Let's shut it so no oopsies happen. Let's take some crumb cake, lay down some dirt. Piece. And of course, it's going to be a little bit darker under his chair. Yeah. There we go. And that's good. Now we need to add the night sky around him. Where is the mask? There it is. There we go. So we're going to put mask him, mask off the back of the card. And we're going to take our Knight of Navy and then we're going to add some shadows. Yep. Now it's good to cut a mask out of the out of a post-it note, a sticky note or something. That always works real well. But if it's something like this, there's no reason you can't just do it from what you got handy right there. Yes, there we go. Getting some nice shadows. some kind of down there just a little bit just a little bit oh look at that I had my mask this side that's okay that's okay I'm gonna put him in the shadows a little bit more but he does have his lantern right there so it's so keeping the shadows at bay okay let's go ahead and add another little bit of crushed curry just to kind of blend into that dark. There we go. Now isn't that looking just cozy and campfire worthy, camp campsite awesome? Yes. Okay. Now let's get back with the Knight of Navy and the crumb cake. Here we go. Let's put some dirt down for the tent. Because of course you're in a clearing, right? So we'll get some dirt down there. Okay. Now let's cover that a little bit and add some shadows. Yes. Got to put some shadows around the trees. Now I think this just looks so pretty when you add the shadows to the trees and all. Mm. Let's 
make a fire and make some s'mores. And we'll pull a little bit of the Knight of Navy onto the crumb cake because you do have shadows in the dirt too. Oh, doesn't that look beautiful? I think that looks lovely. Okay. And we'll kind of tone down the green and put a little bit of shadow onto the tent. There we go. All right. Well, that's about it, but let me show you now why we're going to be using our um, designer series paper. Okay. Let's look here. Look at that. You see how the blends bled through? I love using the blends. However, you really need to do it when you're layering something or you have to cover the back. You don't want to give anybody a card with that showing through. That's what I'm using this for, is to cover the back. Because I just didn't want to cut him out. It's just a matter of personal preference, what you do or don't want to do. Look how nice that looks. Okay, so now the way I'm going to cut out to cover these flaps is very, um, you got to be careful. <laughs> Actually, I'm just teasing. It's about the most school child way to do it. I'm just going to put this here. I'm sure you can measure and do anything you want, but I'm just going to trace it. And because this paper is a directional, I'm going to make sure that I've got it both going um, horizontally. Okay, so that'll cover this side. This is from um, that discontinued paper from Celebration, the Lily paper. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, and I like the back sides too. I like these that are just the regular colors and I think the dark greens just matches the feeling of this card very well. So I've got that side done. Now let me put this one down. Trace. Trace. I know y'all probably have a much more um, professional looking way to do it, but it works for me. There's more than one way to get something done correctly, right? There. And it's better to cut it a little bigger than you need because you can always trim it. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this on. We are almost done. Okay, glue that one on. This side done. I think this card just comes together rather quickly. I love fun folds. I really do. They're so much fun. <laughs> That's why they're called fun folds. Yes, yes, yes. So anyways, I do like fun folds. I like this one's style. I like how you kind of see through to the other layers. And let's look closely, and I think I can trim this up just a tad bit. Yes. Anytime I use anything gluey, I have a special pair of scissors to use on anything sticky. These are my glue scissors. Sides trimmed up and I don't really see any through, but let me just make sure. Okay, and that side's trimmed. Yay! Yay! All right, now I do want to decorate this side right here. Where's my black ink? Here we go. Here's the black. I'm going to put this little 
camping coffee pot. I know mine is blue speckled. Any of y'all camp? You have the blue enameled speckled coffee pot. I have a big one and a small one. I've got two of them. I like coffee. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. Let's put that up. I'm going to go ahead and clean this real quick. Remember, this is called Stays On Cleaner. And it is amazing how it takes your permanent black inks right off. Now you don't want to use this on the photopolymers. It, um, I don't know, I think it kind of eats that away at the photopolymer after a little while. But it's fine to use on the red rubber. And you know, a lot of people use just plain water to clean these stamps. And you can. But did you know that regular stamp cleaner that you can get, your stamp cleaner, actually helps condition your red rubber stamps and keeps them, you know, functioning very nicely. That's why I've got some Stampin' Up! stamps, literally 1996, that I still enjoy using. All right, now we do have to do one more important piece, and we have to make the cattails. So, let me find my cutting machine. Here we go. Oh, I cannot wait. Stampin' Up! has a new cutting machine coming out. And actually, there's two of them. There's a full size, and then there's a mini, so you can go, like, if you're going on your creative weekends or um, on vacation, you can bring it with you. It's not quite as big, but on both of them, both sides fold up, so you can pack it real easy. You can put your stuff away real easy. I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun to use. So, um, and like for this, I did, if I had, if the new ones were available, I would already have the little one, and then I could have just put the littler one up here instead of this big old thing. So, okay, here's my early espresso, here's my cattails, here's the top. Now I do have the um, precision plate on here. I am using the precision plate. bring it back home. Let's get these all out of the way. There we are. Yes. Now this one is quite a bit darker than on the other cards I made. Um, I actually had used chocolate chip, which is an old discontinued color, and I thought, you know, I really want something a little bit darker. I want it to appear a little more shadowed. Okay, make sure all the little bits and pieces are popped out. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now, once you have your line done, actually, I put it kind of high up. I probably don't need quite so much along the bottom. I'm going to trim this down a little bit. Yes, I am. Let's do about there. I do want it thick enough. I'm. You can put this on either flat or pop it up with a foam adhesive. And I'm going to pop it up. I just want to add a little extra depth and texture. Okay. So, now you've got your cattails cut out. Decide which piece of the cattail you want on your card. I think I want from here to there. Is that what I want? Yes, that's what I want. So I'm going to trim, trim it off there. Oh, where are my stampin' snips? This is just way too big and bulky. And my stampin' snips, I think, are with another project I was working on. 
I tell you, I think one of the most underrated Stampin' Up! tools are their little scissors, their little um, snips. Oh my gosh, they're fantastic. I have two pair, and because I love them so much, they tend to go where my project of the moment happens to be. And you'd think this video would be my project of the moment, right? Oh well. That's okay. That is okay. There we are. I like that. I want it a little bit narrower. No, that's good. Okay, so here is a foam adhesive strip. And I've got a piece that's the right length. And you just put it on there. It's basically a long, skinny dimensional. If you've never used it before, these are what we use to make our shaker cards. Fabulous! Oh my gosh, this would be gorgeous on the front of a shaker card. <gasps> Ooh, just think, and then you can put a little sand inside of it. And then when you shake it, you can have... Uh, oh yes, I have an idea. Okay. Look, isn't that great? Oh, I love it! I love it, I love it, I love it! <gasps> Do you know what would be the absolute icing on the cake? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Let me get... There we go. Oh yeah, let's put some, let's get this out of the way. Where is, now what did I do with, uh, oh I didn't even think about this. How did I not think about this? Oh, yes, let's put some Wink of Stella in there. Ooh, ooh, yeah, we'll put some Wink of Stella make it really glow beautifully. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yep. You can never have too much sparkle. I'm such a girl. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, anyways, anyways. I love it. So that is the card. There we go. I hope you like it. I hope you had as much fun making this card as I did. Please give my video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you can find your way back easily and we can create together again. If you don't have a U.S. demonstrator, I'll be more than happy to help you with all of your stamping needs. And if you need a catalog, just visit my website, my 24-7 website, https creatingwithcarol.stampinup.net and that's Carol with an E. And all of my contact information is on my website. It's also down below. Or you can visit me on Facebook at Made With Love and send me a message through there. Thank you again for watching my video. And until next time, keep making the world a beautiful place. Bye.